Fireman Sam and the Orchard Fire. It was early springtime. Lambs frolicked, bunnies gambled, and the flowers of the stone fruit trees blossomed. Norman Price and Mandy Flood were playing in the only orchard in Ponty Pandy, home to forty golden russet apple trees. As well as rediscovering the law of gravity, they built a tree house and hung two hammocks. Mandy had some ready rolled puff pastry and a can of custard in her rucksack, so Norman suggested that he scrump some apples so that they might have a light supper of apple pie. Apples plucked, he collected some twigs for firewood and rubbed two sticks perpendicularly in order to ignite them. There was a ready supply of oxygen, heat and flammable materials, wood, so before long there was a hearty fire ablaze beneath the trees. Would you like a cup of tea, Penny? Elvis asked of Penny. The kettle had an automatic switch, which was fortunate, since before it had finished boiling its watery contents, Penny, Elvis and Fireman Sam were driving at high speed through the streets of Ponty Pandy, answering an emergency call. Shortly they arrived at the orchard. Come quickly, called Mandy to the fire crew. Our apple pie preparation facility has gotten a little out of hand. Fireman Sam hosed down the offending trees until the fire had been extinguished, and then took Norman and Mandy back to the station for a lesson in elementary statistics. The orchard has 40 trees. Let's assume that there's a 10% chance of a tree catching a light. We could use a binomial distribution to model this situation. This would be written X, B, N, P, where N is the number of trials and P is the probability. Norman was eager to learn. Under what conditions is the binomial appropriate? Well, replied Fireman Sam, Firstly, the chance of each tree catching a light is assumed independent of the other trees. Secondly, there would have to be a fixed number of trees in the orchard. Thirdly, the 10% probability would have to be constant. Finally, there can only be two possibilities, catching a light or not. Mandy and Norman both disputed the assertion that the trees catching a light would be independent of each other, but Fireman Sam was not going to be thwarted in his attempt to explain the binomial distribution. In certain circumstances, for certain values of n, in this case 40, and for certain values of p, in this case 0.1, we can use the binomial distribution table to calculate the likelihood of various events. For example, to find the probability of six or fewer trees catching a light, we can look up the probability of x being less than or equal to six on the appropriate page and in the appropriate column. Here, it's a 0.9005 chance. Wow, that's amazing, said Norman, but surely that's all you can do with this table, the inconsiderate way it's set out. You may think that, acknowledged the fireman, but with a bit of sneaky manipulation, one can employ the table to solve a variety of problems. Consider the probability that more than five trees catch a light. Mandy raised her hand. Do you mean six or seven or eight or nine or ten or eleven or twelve or thirteen or fourteen or fifteen or six? Fireman Sam signalled to Mandy to curtail her list. Yes, Mandy, that's exactly what I mean. But as I am sure you have noticed, that list would go on forever. To infinity and beyond, cried Norman, utilising his best Buzz Lightyear impersonation. Well, not beyond, Norman, Sam pointed out. You shouldn't believe everything you hear in cartoons. Anyway, you wouldn't want or be able to add all the probabilities in an infinitely long list. I'll tell you what you need to do. What's the opposite of more than five? Less than five? Mandy inquired with 85% confidence. Almost, replied Fireman Sam encouragingly. But then you would miss out five itself. The opposite of more than five is five or fewer. Like we worked out for six last time. Norman had spotted a pattern. The price is right, joked Sam, making an irreverent and embarrassing pun based upon Norman's surname and a game show launched in 1956 but still made somewhere on earth that neither Norman nor Mandy had any knowledge of. But since we are after the probability of more than five, this time we must subtract that answer from one. Norman consulted the table. The chance of five or fewer is 0 0.7937, so the chance of more than five is 1 minus 0 0.7937, which is 0 0.2063. Dillis will be impressed. 
Norman was already in trouble for setting fire to the golden russet orchard, so Sam thought he'd pass on some good news as well to Norman's mother. My mum told me that you gave a lecture about mean and variance at the Pontypandy Fire Safety Awareness Conference last summer, Mandy recalled. Does that apply here? Ah, yes, I remember that stimulating lecture all right, said Sam. I got a standing ovation and a certificate for best statistical fire-related lecture of the decade. And yes, you can calculate the mean and variance for a binomial distribution. The mean, mu, is n times p, which for our orchard would be 40 times 0.1 equals 4 trees, i.e. you would expect 4 trees to catch fire. And the variance, sigma squared, is np1 minus p, which would be 40 times 0.1 times 0.9, which is 3.6, which is a measure of spread and which is beyond the scope of today's lesson. That's very interesting, said Norman politely. But how would you work out the probability of exactly four trees burning down if all you've got is less than or equal twos? I know, I know, shouted Mandy exuberantly, wishing to prove herself an equal adversary. Find the probability of four or less and take away the probability of three or less. 0 0.6290 take 0 0.4231 equals 0 0.2059. Nurse Helen Fudd would be very proudful of you too, laughed Sam. I think I might teach you about the binomial formula too. You're both doing so well. Why would you need a formula? asked Norman. Everything you need is written in the table. Not quite, corrected Fireman Sam. The tables only cover a limited number of trials and probabilities. Say there was an 11% chance of a tree catching a light. There's no column for 11%. The children examined the N equals 40 table carefully and had to concede that Fireman Sam was justified in his assertion. Here's a picture of the formula from the Pearson NXL formula book, stated Sam, showing them a picture of the formula. It looks complicated, but you know N and P already, and R, or as they call it X, is the thing you want to find out. Let's use it to find the probability of three trees burning down. N is still 40, P is now 0 0.11, and R is 3. And 1 minus P is 0 0.89, interrupted Norman. That brackety thing represents NCR, so we type 40C3, which equals 9880, and we multiply it by 0 0.11 to the power of 3, and 0 0.89 to the power of 37. Mandy pressed the buttons on her calculator. That's 0 0.1763, correct to four decimal places. Well done, good pressing, complimented the fireman. It's nearly time to take you both home to inform your parents how naughty you've been, but let's just consider one more example. Imagine we have five orchards, each with 40 trees, each tree with a 10% chance of catching a light. What's the probability of two of the orchards having exactly four trees alight? You'd have to use the answer we generated earlier, said Mandy. 0 0.2059, said Norman. And it would be a new binomial distribution with n equals 5 and r equals 2, said Mandy. And p equals 0 0.2059, said Norman. So you'd have to use that formula again because 0 0.2059 isn't in the table. All correct, said Sam. Tell you what, off you go. I'll replant the trees myself. No asbos for either of you today. The two scurried off whilst Fireman Sam did his final calculation, then hung up his hat, said farewell to Station Officer Steele, and made his journey home via the Pontypandy Nursery. <laughs>